Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing, Lisa? Good, good. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to do this Q&A session. As you know, I've been doing a few of these over the last couple of months since we're all locked up in our home offices, and I finally get to put you in the hot seat. So are you ready for this? I'm sweating. I'm sweating already. I'm psyched. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So I just have a few quick questions for you. I won't take up too much of your time, but I wanted our listeners and, and viewers to get a sense of who you are. You are our president here at Innovate MR. You've been with us over two years now, but, but help me understand, how did you get started in the industry? How did you find market research among all the other career opportunities available to, to someone like yourself? Uh, good question. I kind of landed in it um, haphazardly, randomly, like probably all of us. Um, somehow I've been in this this crazy and, and relatively small knit, close knit, I guess, industry for almost uh, 20 years. I was one of the almost original Greenfield Mafia. I joined Greenfield Online in 2003 with so many other rookies that were that were cutting their teeth in online data collection and and really just trying to make sense of it all um prior to that i spent uh an exhilarating eight years as a as a stockbroker in a management training program with a company named uh quick and riley and i really loved that fast-paced financial trading environment that i was exposed to i i worked on the new york stock exchange i worked in um part of uh, of an institutional trading desk. And then I had client facing exposure and it was awesome. Um, as far as kind of like the MR space and how I landed in it and, and what, if I have any kind of um, expertise in, I don't really have any, to be honest, <laughs> it may seem strange to say, but it's, it's pretty darn accurate. Um, I have a love for data and, and numbers and analytics, but, um, my biggest appreciation, I think, in, in, in business per se is, is, generally speaking, is having deep and rewarding and, and awesome relationships with longstanding clients. I think that's, that's the biggest thing that, that and the, the, the most emphasis that I put on any kind of business interaction that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I know you, I mean, you, I would run into you all the time at different conferences. And of course, George Lawrence, one of our founders, you and him worked together for years at Greenfield. And he always used to tell me what an amazing salesperson you are. And so you were always like the competition, you know, I'd see <laughs> at these shows and think, God, you know, he's so good. I can see him talking to lots of clients and, um, you know, what do you, what do you think has been part of your, your long running sales um, success? What, what makes a really great sales leader in our space? Because that's really, you know, when I think of Michael Anderson, I think of an incredible salesperson with just a ton of acumen around working with clients and serving clients. So I just would love to pick your brain on that. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I saw you. I saw you from afar at those conferences. Also, I said, what a wonderful young lady there. <laughs> she, I, I, I want her on my team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's so, it's so competitive out in the market these days. And as much as we've seen changes with like digitalization and automation selling to me, I think it's, it's very much uh, a personal touch situation to be really successful. You need to believe a hundred percent in what you're selling. Everybody knows that but you have to have passion for your client and, and really the solution that ultimately they're buying. It definitely doesn't hurt to be hyper competitive and want to win all the time. But I really think at least in this industry, um, the successful salespeople are those that are smart, consultative, uh, honest, and really just drive home a, a, a relationship type of approach with our clients. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. It is really a relationship business, isn't it? It's like connecting with people, doing right by them, helping them navigate some of their challenges. I always say, you know, when people, we all experience pain in our personal and our professional lives, but if we can help solve for pain in whatever way possible, I think that's what builds relationships, creates that really great rapport 
and helps to build loyalty over time. So, and I think you do a great job at that. You're very consultative from what I've observed in the last two plus years we've been working together. When you think about the sales team here at Innovate, what do you think, um, it, you know, how, how does the team work to really optimize the client experience? Has anything sort of stood out to you as you've been working with the team here? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't even just say just the sales team, I'd say the, the, the entire team in general, everything needs to be high touch, everything. And I mean, everything needs to be, we call it white glove, high touch, no matter what client you are. From the first time we engage or talk to a client and receive a project brief, all the way through delivery, each and every time. It's not really rocket science on how to obsess and, and fixate over client satisfaction. Um, really just have to deliver high quality data quickly and at a fair price, and it will allow repeat business. Um, you know, specific strategies I think you asked about, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like I don't want to, I want to hold those close to the vest a little bit. I don't really want to disclose those. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we could always ask our over 350 global clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like know. a vault. You're like a vault, Michael. I love it. You know. <laughs> um, okay. So thinking about the market research space, and we actually started the same year. We both started in, in 2003. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, I didn't realize that until this discussion. Um, and I've seen a lot of change in the industry. What what have you observed? How has the market research space really changed over the years? Um, I mean, that's you know, it's it's a lot about automation, a lot of a lot about programmatic and digitalization. But I think if you ask um, if you ask John Tan mm -hmm. that question, because he left the industry like five or six years ago and then came back and he was like, Michael, there's some, been some like, you know, speed is really kind of important now. And that's kind of why our tagline is faster answers. Mm -hmm. um, but not a lot has changed. I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of democratization that has happened in our space and you've got a situation where people are doing um, research themselves because budgets are constrained and they want, to, to answer things faster. Um, but I, I don't think it's changed a whole hell of a lot, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. We're all just people at the end of the day trying to get our work done. <laughs> yeah. 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 And obviously the last few months, there's been a lot of change with, with the pandemic hitting and all of us now working from home full time. But I think our space was really well uh, positioned to to make this transition better than other industries, quite honestly, because we were already virtual. We're all spread out. I'm in New York. You're in Connecticut. Our headquarters are in California. So the net net is we're all working 24/7, anyways, pre-pandemic. Uh, you know, crossing over all these different time zones. And so I, I love that sort of virtual component that our career and our our industry affords us, uh, even during you know challenging times like what we're all living in today. So switching gears a little bit, obviously sure. you're a president, you oversee several different groups within, um, within our business and you are very involved with the executive team, part of, you know, member of our executive team, helping to set strategy, growth plans, scale plans for the business. Um, you know, how would you describe yourself as a leader? I mean, there's so many mm -hmm. different types of discipline you know, uh, kind of disciplines around and, and thoughts around leadership. What, what do you think makes you tick as a leader? What are some of the qualities as a leader that you really think you embody and that you think are important to embody when you're, when you're leading teams? Yeah, no, thanks for the, the question. Um, I don't know any other way, but by example, you know, if you take that sports analogy, a leader on a team is the player that sets the tone and the example by which the work ethic and, and, and drive to, to deliver our constant examples that will, that will permeate through a team and organization. And I think now more than ever, it's super important to understand empathy. And for those that we interact with on a daily basis, what they might be dealing with in their business or personal lives. Um, don't get me wrong, I want our team, myself included, to run through a wall for our clients and our colleagues but often we need to step back and look at the larger picture. We're a pretty flat organization, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it works very well. Um, 
you know, specifically me as a leader, I need to ensure that Innovate's offering a, a workplace that is fun, which we do, um, and collaborative, and the team can see me and others on our leadership team in the trenches. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's about rolling your sleeves up and jumping in and leading by example. And, you know, we've obviously been in the space a long time, but, you know, and I've heard this from other people that I work with, I'm not afraid to jump in. You know, oh, it's <laughs> no doubt. You know, and I love that. I love that about us. I think that's really important. We have a lot of experience. We've, there's certain things you can study. You can get manuals, you can study SOPs and, you know, memorize all the acronyms that we have in our industry. But a lot of what we know is from experience. We've learned on the street of market research. It sounds so gritty, but it's really true. I've got battle scars everywhere. <laughs> and you learn by doing and, and to extend that experience to others. Um, is important. And sometimes it requires that you just jump in and make it happen. Okay. So a couple more questions and then I'll sure, let sure. you off this hot seat. This is a two pronger. First one, thinking about everything around market research, what do you absolutely love? What's your most favorite thing about market research? And then secondarily to that, what is your biggest pet peeve about market research? Um, okay. Uh, you know, I think Market research has its, uh, its, its underpinnings and curiosity. And I think everyone to varying degrees has a, a curiosity barometer. So what do I love about MR? I think what I love about MR is that we're, we're helping people understand things that they may not fully understand. And we're delivering data which will enable them to make important decisions. And I've heard it a ton over the last few years um, data is the oil that greases and powers the machine. And I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a great answer. I couldn't agree more. Now for your pet peeve, what do you hate? What do you wish you could change about our industry? Give it to me real. Don't hold back. Uh, it's pretty easy. Sales oh. procurement exercises. Okay. <laughs> Expand on that. Expand on uh, that. I mean, you know, when, when you've got, um, a sales procurement exercise, it can just be a, a bit of a, an exercise where you know um, the relationship is taken out of the whole situation um, and you are just brought down a path of we need faster, better, and cheapest. And there's a place for that in business for sure. Mm -hmm. But I just, it's a pet peeve. Um, you know, I think I could, a close second would be, um, you'll like this one, is um, leaders or I could say leader uh, operations leaders that care only about financial performance rather mm -hmm. than the client. Mm -hmm. um, and I can add in third. I, you know what? <laughs> Let loose on me. Now I only asked for one, me, but now you're giving to me three. I, I may have like 15 here. <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> um, someone who uses the rate, the phrase works for me. You, you just can't, Mm. work together it's work with i've never ever used that word we mm. all work with each other no one works for somebody else even though that may be a fact with a hierarchical mm -hmm. structure but it's a work with me and um i just think it kind of imbues a a tone that's a little bit derogatory so we all work that's with each other as a cohesive team and none of this work for mentality so those are I'll that's a good one. That's a totally a good one. I, uh, I've had experience with that last one way back when at another company, you know, person would introduce me as my staff, you know, Lisa works on my staff. She's part of my team. She reports into me. And I just found it to your point, a bit derogatory. And I remember actually funny story. First day on the job, I finally got a chance to meet uh, Matt Dusig. Him and I had been corresponding back in 2009, 2009. We were corresponding over the phone, had a series of different interviews and discussions. And I finally said, you know, I want to work for this guy. And so my very first day meeting him in person was my first day on the job. Oh, back, wow. at, at, uh, at back then it was called United Sample, which then became USAMP, which then became Instantly and so on and yeah. so forth. <laughs> it's a long story. That's another Q&A session. But I remember on that first day, he brought me into a meeting. Like he wasted no time. I filled out a bit of HR paperwork, signed a few documents. And he's like, okay, I've got a call at 11. Why don't you jump in here and I'll introduce you. And I remember succinctly, he said, oh, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Lisa. Hmm. And I was like, 
you're the CEO of this company. I'm your employee day one and you're introducing me as your colleague. Yeah. And I really, all these years later, it still resonates with me. And it, 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 it set the tone for what has now been an 11 year working relationship and friendship. So I, I love that. I agree 100%. Okay. So last question. Um, if you, and I've asked this of everyone I've done Q and A sessions with, and you know, it's a bit of a funny question. I always like to kind of get into the psyche of your older self versus your younger self. Oh yeah. But obviously we're now (laughs) middle-aged. But if you could reach back into time and, and have a conversation with, you know, early 20 something, Michael, whether Michael on wall street or the Michael at Greenfield, what would you say to him? Any advice that you would give to that, that fine young man to help him navigate business and life? Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm glad you said in the twenties, cause if it was twenties or thirties, you you get a different answer, right? Or even 10, right? right. Um, or three. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, every time the stock market tanks, go deep on margin, max out on credit cards, and load up on everything possible. <laughs> That's one. Um, start a company called Amazon and sell products in an online marketplace. <laughs> yeah. That's an awesome right. one. <laughs> um, I don't think I'd offer any advice other than stay the course, fella. You're leading a damn good life. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, this has been awesome, Mike. I appreciate you so much. It's been so wonderful working with you. I'm so glad that we're finally part of the same team and not competitors. So true. I didn't like competing against you. So it's great to be part of part of a team together. And I really appreciate your time and get back to uh, doing what you do best, which is working with clients and solving for pain. Thanks so much, Lise. Great chatting. All right. Take care. See you later. Bye.